Today we'll do the vibrating string lab. Uh, so basically the objective of this lab is we're going to study a little bit of wave mechanics. All right, and the reason that I opted to just do this lab and not both of these labs is because they both involve wave mechanics. That one, you use wave mechanics to calculate the frequency or the speed of sound. In this one, you use wave mechanics to calculate the frequency of this oscillator. Now you'll notice on the top, it says string vibrator. I will be calling it an oscillator for the demo, so, or for the, uh, for the instructions. So uh, we're going to use this oscillator and the properties of physics to uh, determine the um, frequency for the given oscillator. All right, so the first step is to calculate the linear mass density of the object. Now, what is a linear mass density? Well, it's analogous to regular density. So when you calculated in Archimedes' principle the density of an object, we said a mass per unit volume, okay? But if I say the linear mass density of this meter stick, I'm not asking the question, what is the mass per volume? I'm asking, what is the mass per each unit length? Okay, so I'm saying, how much mass is in a foot? Or how much mass is in, you know, uh, a meter, all right, so to speak, so. Um, and the reason we use that is because we'll be using that equation to calculate the wave velocity. So I'm gonna call this curvy V, and I'll call it nu, all right? It's a curvy V. The reason I don't call it V is because it's not like regular velocity, but it's wave velocity. So that's why we use Greek symbols that are similar to the analogous, analogous to the ones that you use regularly. So V is equal to the square root of the tension divided by mu, okay? And the tension is going to be just the force that's put on the uh, oscillator. So what we'll do is we'll set up the apparatus. Now there's two types of strings. There's one that's really thin, like a, um, like a dental floss. I don't know if the thing is floating around the room. You can check your tables. I'm not sure if it's floating around here if I get it from next door. There's two pieces of string. There's this one, and then there is a thicker gauge, which is this one right here that you'll use. So we're going to do four total experiments, and I'll show you what we need to do. Hold that right there, would you please? Thank you. So we'll take the mass and the hanger. For right now, I'll just stick the hanger on. So we'll plug in the oscillator. It'll start to oscillate. All right, and then, okay, so you will create a harmonic pattern, all right, based on the distance of separation for the nodes, all right? So based on this tension, there is a given distance that I can move this apparatus to in which I create a superposition of waves. So the way I like you guys to think about this is if I attach a jump rope to the wall, all right, and I send a ripple down the jump rope and it goes to the wall, it's gonna hit the wall, it's gonna bounce off the wall and come back to me, all right? There's a frequency that I can send the waves in such a way that when they come back, they meet each other right in the middle, and there's a frequency that I can send in which they come back and they completely cancel each other out, all right? One of those, when they meet each other, is called constructive interference, and when they cancel out, it's called destructive interference, all right? So that is uh, one of the physic physics properties that goes into your noise canceling headphones. If you ever wonder how you cancel out the noise, it's because you use destructive interference to block the frequency of any incoming noise, and you use that physics to make you uh, hear music better. So I'm going to move this to a given uh, distance in which I see the pattern maximized. So you can see as I move it, all of a sudden the pattern stabilizes, and I get what is effectively a two-node pattern, or excuse me, uh, I'll call this a full wavelength or two half nodes, all right, or two half waves I should call them. All right, and the reason it's a full wavelength is because if I were to enlarge this, it would look like this, go down, and look like this. It would look like one full sine wave. All right, so you want to move it until a point where you think you make it the best. So I'm going to move it in. I see it builds, it builds. See, it's much better than it was just a second ago. And if I build it more, I can see it destructs and it goes to nothing. Okay, that's destructive interference. We know this is vibrating, but there's no waves. So what's going on? They're canceling each other out as they come back. But we want constructive interference. Right? So I'm going to move it to that distance, all right? And in the first case, for both strings, if you use just the hanger, then the tension is easy. The tension is just mass times gravity, all right? So I'll write that down. The tension, uh, T, is equal to M hanger times G in each case, 
All right. Once you have the tension, which is pretty straightforward, you want to measure the nodal separation. So I'm going to measure the distance between nodes. All right. A node, if this is a wavelength, okay, and this is a wave. All right. So a node is uh, the point at which there's nothing going on, basically. All right, there's no oscillation. So those are those are called nodes. Every two nodes is a full wavelength. All right, which means every uh, every distance between the nodal separation is half a wavelength. So I'll, um, nodal separation <coughs> equals uh, L, and then you say two L is equal to lambda, which is the wavelength. Okay. So what I want to do is measure the nodal separation. Now I have a technique that I like to use with students that helps you take a better measurement. Typically, I don't like to see two half waves uh, because the next step after this is we're going to add mass to this and it's going to destruct and then it's going to rebuild. All right. So you can already see at this uh, at this case um, in this example the uh, wave velocity. All right, is dependent upon the tension, which is the mass times gravity, and it's dependent on this, which will be constant throughout the experiment. All right, so <coughs> basically three. We use this different type of string. We usually don't use this dental floss garbage. But this is basically going to be three half waves. That is nothing because that's touching that. So, all right. So in this case, if you're using this type of string, we have to go with the two because it's going to give you the best looking pattern. That's a sacrifice we'll have to make. Okay. So once I get the uh, once I get the pattern down, so what you'll do is you'll have one student put their hand underneath like this. All right. So can you do this for me? Put your hand underneath the string and not don't touch it, but like. Just so this is so you can decipher where the actual string is because if you try to take a measurement on it and it's vibrating, you know, a foot off the table, you're not going to really see it that well. So I'll measure the distance from where it's oscillating to where the node center is. So I'm this is the tough part, the tricky part. You have to gauge where the center is, and the center is right about there. So we want to take this measurement, and the measurement is let's say 56 or 57. So, you take the measurement of the nodal separation, once you have that measurement, you multiply it by two, and you get the wavelength, all right, lambda. From there, you know that V is equal to F lambda, so as a result, F is equal to the wave velocity divided by lambda, all right, and that is the value that you're going to calculate. Now. When you calculate that value, I'll come around the room and I'll check your answers to make sure it's right. I'm not going to tell you what the total frequency is until the end because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but you'll calculate the frequency and once you get the right answer, we'll move on to the next step. The next step is, as I said before, the wave velocity is dependent upon the tension and the, um, and the mu. And we need a wavelength, all right? so we need another pattern. So what I'm going to do is I will add mass to the hanger. Now, I'm not going to add the mass, but I'm going to show you with my hand by adding tension. I can get this. This is what's going to happen is it's going to destruct and go to nothing, and then I'm going to get one full wave, one full half a wave. All right? So if this was three and I were to pull down on this, it would degrade, go to nothing, and then you'd see two. And then I pull down on this, it degrades, go to nothing, and then you'd see one as I add more and more tension. All right? And that's what should happen when you use a thicker gauge string. So I pull down, it'll destruct, go to nothing, and then at a certain tension, the blue, we'll get one whole one. All right, that one's easy. All you have to do is measure the distance of the oscillator. Don't measure the base, but measure where it's oscillating from the total nodal separation and get the mass that you have to put on to achieve that pattern. All right, now the keys to this is make sure that you get as precise a mass as you can to get the perfect pattern, and you get as precise of a distance as you can to get the perfect pattern. All right, so you'll notice in this case if I move it in a little bit. You know, like I was saying before, it actually looks a little better right here than it did. So that's a little more perfect. All right. And that obviously is going to change my answer by a little bit in terms of the precision. And the same thing with the mass. If I add mass, I might think it's just one whole one. 
But if I add a little more and it gets better, then it wasn't at the best possible mass, right? So what you do is you calculate the frequency. Um, so calculate frequency. Twice for um, each string. All right. So you'll do this twice for this one, changing the mass each time, and then you'll change out strings for the thicker gauge string, and then you'll repeat the experiment. And what you'll find in all four total measurements that you're going to have is that the frequency is the same because it's the frequency of the oscillator, and that doesn't change throughout the experiment. All right. So are there any questions before we move on? All right, one of the things we're going to do right off the get-go is we're going to measure the linear mass density of both types of strings. I'll find the precise measurements for both of these types of strings, and then uh, I'll give you those values, and you can just plug them in. But other than that, we'll just set up and we'll get going. Okay? Everybody else set?